Hey everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art. Uh, welcome to another episode of Color Talk. Uh, we talk about colors, paints, uh, different techniques, pouring, watercolor, whatever seems to be uh, the highlight of the day. Today we're going to be doing a pour, um, a couple of them, but I am first going to show you how to mix your own color. We have an entire line of pigments called Primer Elements. Um, we have 200 colors. Right now on the website we only offer, I think, a 60 color sampling. But they are the basis of everything we make. So for paint pouring, I mean everything we make, watercolors, our silks acrylic glaze, our vivid ultra metallics, they all stem from the same color base that our pigments are made out of. So uh, for paint pouring, you could buy the Vivid Multi-Surface Acrylic Paint. It is an acrylic enamel. It's not just a regular acrylic, it's an acrylic enamel. It'll go on wood, glass, beautiful on our glass ornaments. But it's also great for paint pouring. But if you want to uh, save money, the more practical way, once you really get into paint pouring and you love our product, is graduate to mixing your own. So what I've done is I've taken some of our primary elements, pure ground color, our own custom hand blended colors with mica in it, about two uh, quarter teaspoons, I've already got here in the cup, about as much as it comes on the end of my popsicle stick. I'm going to put in some of this clear uh, enamel. This is an old label, our new enamel label actually has uh, clear gloss medium. My apologies, this is an old bottle I have on my table. Um, so I'm going to mix in about two ounces. And <clears throat> a couple customers have said, it feels like mayonnaise. Yeah, the, the gloss enamel has some body to it. It's very viscous. Let's see if we can get a close-up here for you guys. It's very viscous. So give it a chance to break down the pigments. Scrape the sides. You'll know when it's done. You won't see any more uh, pigment particulates. Let's just say this is a more economical way to do it, but you can always use the Vivid already pre-mixed and just pour it out like you would any other acrylic paint other than, remember, this is enamel. It even dries a little bit glossier than uh, typical acrylic paints. Yeah, this color is called French Lilac. Absolutely gorgeous. You would call this a color shifting paint. Color shifting paint, I know that's a term that's being used a lot right now. Color shifting paint, uh, it hits the light and the color shifts based on, wow, even that camera is going crazy right now, based on the, how the light hits it. Now, true color shifting might be uh, our color wisteria, which is a violet, but it's got a green pearl. This is actually violet on violet. so. It's, it's an iridescence, the colors will really, really pop in your pore, but it doesn't have the opposite color of mica as, it, as the actual color based in paint. Okay, I'm gonna be right back and have all my colors mixed up so we can do the pour. Okay, so I'm back. So before um, we get to all the other colors I've mixed up, here's another color called Pretty Pierdo. Looks just like some dull green powder in the jar. And here is the pretty peridot mixed up with the enamel. I want you guys to get a real close-up of how shimmery this is. It's hard once it's in a pour. And I've got a new uh, macro lens for my phone, so I'm going to try to, after this video, splice in a little close-up if I can, if I can get it to work. But this is the Pretty Peridot mix, the same way as I did the French Lilac. However, I'm going to add a dash of Liquitex Pouring Medium. I'm sure you're all familiar with the bottle, Liquitex Pouring Medium. Just a dash. 
So this is a four and a half, five ounce salsa cup. It's about halfway full with the medium and the pigments. Um, that much. Not 70%. I want my colors beautiful, rich, and vibrant. Then I'll add a few drops of water. Mix well and give the paint a chance to absorb the water. Every paint manufacturer's acrylic base is different. They all absorb the water at different rates. I'm sure many of you have mixed up a white and been ready to do a pour and say, why is my white thick again? It's because while you've had its cup, while you've had it covered, the acrylic base and the pigments are still responding to the water. Still not ready. Okay, this is getting to make sure it's all mixed up pretty. Uh, if you've not heard the proper consistency, many paint pouring people have already had it told to them. It should pour off the popsicle stick nicely. You don't want it to stop, no breaks. It should flow like a cream. Too thick, it'll stop and start and stop and start. Too thin, it runs off like water. You don't want that either. Okay, this is perfect. I'm going to put in some treadmill oil with my handy dandy pipette, which I could not find, but there's a few drops of treadmill oil in that. I got this on Amazon, macro lubral type 200 silicone. Love this stuff. Love, 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 love. Give it a proper stir. So I hadn't put the tacks on the back, but you can see me do the fourth one. They're little uh, wall tacks. Got my little rubber mallet here. Most of you have seen a lot of us use that, but for newbies that have not seen that, that's real handy for keeping your frame up and off the surface so you can pick it up from the sides. Real, real handy. So my colors are uh, a little Windsor Newton Fallow Green, just a few drops mixed with some Artist Loft white, just or any kind of white paint. I also have some uh, white paint, such as this. I also have, uh, for another opaque color, these are my opaque colors, I have white in this squeeze bottle. No silicone in my white. I'm gonna use very, very, very little black, but I also have some Artist Loft already thinned down with uh, no silicone in it. Now, the primary element colors, Mystic Blue, which is a very, very deep blue teal. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to show up on the camera. And then we have the Pretty Peridot, which you just saw me finish putting the silicone in the water in and the French lilac, which I also finished up by putting the uh, pouring medium and the silicone in. And I haven't done a dirty pour in a really, really long time, so we're going to do a dirty pour. So we're going to do a dirty pour. I haven't done one in a really, really long time, just not a regular old dirty pour. I've got a little 5x7 canvas here. So I'm going to put my uh, white with no silicone on the bottom. Once I get the goober off the top of this thing. Um, I keep them in squeeze bottles because I do uh, a lot of decorative work that I like to have this, these tips on. These are so handy for the colors that you use a lot of. So. There's a little white on the bottom, and I'm going to put in some Mystic Blue. I'm not pouring it too high up, and I'm not pouring it too low. 
I kind of want the colors to layer. I call that parfait style. Let's see if we can get a close up of this as I'm pouring them in so you can see. Uh, next color I'm going to put in is my opaque teal that I mixed with a little fallow green and white. Boy, that's really interesting. I'm close up. Again, I'm just going to pour some of that on top. I'm squeezing a light layer of the white in between, but parfaiting it again, not trying to have it go down and turn in and mix. I want it to stay on top. Same thing with the French lilac. Yeah, I wish I had a metallic mixed up now. I'd love to see a gold right here. I don't think I have one mixed up. But I'm going to take a chance and put, uh, when I put in black, and just so a little bit of history, our colors are very transparent. That's why they're so shimmery. The color is very transparent to a lot of my good work. And I find with transparent colors, black can be very dangerous if you put too much in. So I am literally putting four drops in there. Then I'm going to put my opaque teal on top, that Windsor Newton Artist Loft mix on top. I'm going to add a drizzle of the white. And then my pretty peridot. And I'll try to get the whole layer covered with it if I can without trying to churn it too much. See how that's staying on top? Okay. Then let's try, I'm winging it here. Four drops of the black. Again, I'm missing a gold. So just for grins and giggles, I went back to my stash and uh, got some gold. It's pretty light. It may not do much, but it'll, it'll dry nicely. I just want something to break up our shimmery colors and not use too much white. So back to the misty blue. A little bit of our opaque teal. A little dash of the French lilac. My risky black, four drops of black. We'll see if it makes any difference at all. And have I put double of everything in there? I have. I think I'm just going to end up with a little bit more gold. Kind of sorry I didn't mix me up. And a tiny bit more of our opaque teal. Let me move off all my bottles out of the way. So I have a bamboo skewer here, and I'm just going to give this one simple turn. I kind of went zigzagged each way. Wow, I'm a little nervous. I haven't done this in a while. I'm excited. I think I'm excited like you guys when, you know, it's the first time you've done it or haven't done it in a while. So we're going to start up here.
So well, I don't know if I need to use all of this left in the cup. I have a lot of pain in here. Kind of digging what we got going on here. I'm liking whatever this blue is. It's that mystic blue that's popping through. And some of it's trying to come through on this black. Sorry, it's too close up for you guys. And this will probably be a better angle. The shape looks a little strange, but I don't want to disturb these cells that are trying to come up. Let me get my torch. <clears throat> Or I'm going to try to find the side of the cup that looks like the light blue is going to come out. There we go. Okay, I've got a really big torch, one of the big manga ones, so bear with the noise, guys. And all this stuff that's popping through. Like what's happening here. I kind of like this little splash of purple. That's a dilemma. I don't want to lose all this stuff that's happening up here. Hmm. I love that little violet bit up here. I'm liking what's happening here, so I'm trying to stretch that. Don't really want to lose any paint, but I feel like I need to open this up a little bit. Okay, now some came off the edges, as I'm sure as you would have predicted. So I'll grab a little bit of this. Because if you have paint all the way around the edges, um, even if you just want to encourage that paint on that corner to move, it will move. There's paint going over the sides. Man, I really like that violet. This is where I get terrified, thinking I'm going to somehow screw up. as I'm sure we all do. Pretty interesting. Wow. Okay, so like that piece I just did is taking forever to dry. And I told you I'd do two pieces. Ah, this turquoise with the silicone and the it dominated the piece. Um, I'll show you guys right now, it's across the room drawing. So I'm gonna opt for 
different color, just white and some black and the gold. I don't know. I haven't even decided if maybe I shouldn't pour in this white. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but until that's dry, I can't really get that mackerel lens up to an inch, right? To Because uh, you have to be within an inch on your cell phone to be able to get the shot. Oh, I got paint all over my hands. Here, let me get some gloves. So this is a cute little wooden heart um, hanger. I've had it in my stash for a while. I don't even know if the company's still around, but it, it's like a little piece of press board or uh, whatever that press wood is. I can't think of what it's called now. Um, and a little wire hanger. It is Valentine's, so I want to do something kind of fun and springy without doing the typical uh, red and black. So let's try another dirty pour. This is a tiny little surface. Quite frankly, I have these little three quarter ounce salsa cups I got when I was doing the ornaments. I'm gonna try to use those as the tiny little pour cups. I'll put white in the bottom of both of them. Come on. There's a goober in there. Let's see if that go. Little bit of the French lilac in each one. And in this little cup, just two drops of black. Put a little bit of my Mystic Blue. If you hadn't noticed, I'm doing two little salsa cups at once, just, just so I know I have enough made. Some gold. I believe the gold has no silicone, the black has no silicone, the white has no silicone. Uh, so what color are we missing? We're missing this pretty peridot green. Oops. Trying to do this in a hurry because this is a, a little bonus piece while that other one's drying. Two drops of black. A little gold. Some violet. Two drops of black. Those are big drops of black. Wow. And I think I'll just put a few little drops of the tail on top. I love this tail color. We'll see how it looks. Move all my little things off the side. This already has a dribble on it, but that's okay. I mean, you know, we're going to cover it up with paint anyway. So I've got my little two cups here. Let's see if I can't do this. Flip them both over at the same time. <laughs> see if I can't move one up here a little bit. Can you even see how pretty that is? Oh, I gotta do that combination again on a bigger on a bigger canvas. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Taking out that light turquoise. I eliminated this color. 
just real quickly, this is what I got. And by eliminating that one color, this is what I got. Okay, so let's see how I can carefully get this moved around. We're already losing some color on the side. I'm going to pick that up and just kind of tap it back on. I'm kind of a believer in kind of letting it go where it wants to go. I mean, the idea is to get some of it moved over here. Digging these cells. Shoot, what do I do? What do I do? Do I mix up another cup really quick? Let's mix up another cup really, really quick. I still have some of that color, right? So we had white. There's still some left in these cups, but there's white, turquoise. Gold. Two drops of black. Violet. Yeah, I also think it didn't help that that light teal had silicone in it. You usually need a good, strong, opaque color for the cells to pop up through. So, let's see, I want to make sure I'm not losing track here. Of these. And one more of this. I'm just trying to get and then I know I ended that other one with this color on top, so yeah, it's... and I didn't even stir them, did I? I just did them as a straight old flip cup. Well, I have a little, I don't know where my bamboo skewer is, but I have a little tiny coffee stir here. I'll give it one little twist. All this is for, wow, I don't know what's happening right up here. I wish this is one little piece it was on the canvas. You see that purple and black? Wow. Okay, well... I have to get a little crazy here. You may not agree with my choices. I'm okay with that. <laughs> no offense meant to anybody. <laughs> but in order to get these colors to move to the sides, you kind of have to have something on the edge. Loving that right there, right there. I want a whole piece in that color. And I'm loving what's happening right here. The camera is not picking it up. I need a macro lens to do it, but this looks like an abalone shell. It's just, the color is just magnificent. Okay, let's get this thing filled in. We haven't even put a torch on it yet. I just want to make sure that I don't lose that design around the edge. Oh, sorry. My apologies. I've got it closed up and I'm not even done. little hanger. I think the next time I do when I have a couple of these, I'm going to take the hanger off and put it back in because this little wire being left on is kind of a pain in the neck. Oops. Lesson learned less. I think I'll probably paint the edge of this thing black anyway. So it's more striking. Wow. Uh, personally, I like both of these, but the 
result of this is much more muted. This heart came out stunning. Well, here you go. Here's both pieces done. Uh, I personally like this one a lot better. The colors pop, leaving this uh, pre-mixed teal out with the silicone. I think putting the silicone in it was a mistake. Using this in place of white probably would have been good, but using the white and this together and this having silicone to break up as much as the other colors really softened the look of this piece, even though tomorrow I'll let you see what it looks like dry. But this is much more dramatic. Again, these colors are French Lilac, Primary Elements, mixed with the Vivid Clear Enamel. This color is the Pretty Peridot. This color is the Mystic Blue. Um, they were all pre-mixed Primary Elements with our Vivid Clear Enamel, available at www.colorart.com. And right now we have a 30% sale going on uh, for Valentine's. The coupon code is on the front of the site. You can't miss it. See you guys next time, and thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.